Ladies and gentlemen, the time has officially come to discuss following Alex Pineda's beautiful left hook knockout of Jamal Hill at UFC 300. It's finally time to have the conversation. Alex Pineda is now officially a bigger star and a bigger draw than one Israel Adesanya. Oh, how the tides have turned. Alex was always going to be that guy in a bar being like, I beat that guy one time. I knocked that guy out one time. Yep. Now Israel Adesanya is walking around being like, huh, I beat that guy one time. Now in all fairness, in kickboxing in their very first fight, Israel Adesanya, like there's no doubt about it that Izzy is a fantastic fighter. He's a really good striker. He's very high level. But we are now at the point where Poetan Pineda, in my opinion, is now a bigger star than Israel Adesanya. If I told you there was an opportunity for a main event to come up that was going to be a banger, a firefight, and you didn't know who was headlining it, and I said it would either be Alex Pineda or Israel Adesanya, who are you going to rely on to deliver a banger headlining the card? I would assume that you're probably going to pick a pick Alex Poetan Pineda. Now, we can sit there and talk about all that Israel Adesanya has done in the sport, and he has done some outstanding things at 185 pounds. He's definitely going to go down as one of the best middleweights of all time. And he, at one point, was a very hot name in the UFC. The tides have turned, ladies and gentlemen. Alex Pineda is now that dude. He's been that guy for a while in terms of being entertaining, being exciting. And he officially is now in that driver's seat when it comes to the star power. And I believe that he should absolutely blow off Israel Adesanya. I don't think he should respond to anything Izzy has to say. Because the one that holds the cards now is the champ at 205 that is knocking people out, and that is Alex Poe and Tom Pineda. Let me remind you that Israel Adesanya, yes, he's as many great things as he has done at 185. He moved up to 205, took on Jan Blahovic and lost. Alex Pineda goes up to 205, beats Jan Blahovic, which I will give you was an incredibly close fight. Then he goes out there, knocks out Yuri Prohaska. You can put an asterisk because it was an, it was an early stoppage. I get that. But at the end of the day, it's back-to-back -back wins at light heavyweight. Goes out there against Jamal Hill, who, by the way, Jamal Hill sought out Adesanya to ask him for some advice coming into this matchup with Alex Pineda. And Alex Pineda goes out there, sets Jamal Hill up beautifully from the beginning. Started with those beautiful switch kicks to the lead leg, started beating up that calf immediately, started throwing that jab to the body, and then finally set him up. By the way, one of the most gangster moments we've ever seen inside the UFC, telling Herb Dean, hold on, man, let me operate here, let me cook, I got this thing, steps in in the very next exchange and sleeps Jamal Hill with a left hook that basically landed with two knuckles, puts him down, vicious ground and pound, and then goes, you see, Izzy, look what I did, my man. What advice did you give this guy? And at the end of the day, guys, like, Alex Pineda has now became one of the biggest stars inside the UFC. He's 36 years of age. He comes over from glory. He's a two-division champion. He, you know, when he came into the UFC, it was very evident what, the, what, the, what they were going to do. They wanted to get do anything they could to get Alex to Izzy. And the UFC did a tremendous job of giving him the perfect matchups to get him the wins and get him in front of Adesanya. If Alex would have never have beaten Izzy that first time, are we sitting here having a conversation like this? Are we sitting here seeing Alex do what he's done? I don't know. But, the, but, but at the end of the day, things have worked out the way that they have. And when I sit there and look and watch the performances that we have seen from Alex Poetan Pineda, you cannot sit there and tell me that he is not more entertaining than his Rod Asanya. Everyone is tuning in to Alex Pineda now. And it's hard to kind of gauge off of UFC 300, right? Obviously, you know, Israel Asanya and DDP couldn't figure it out to make it happen for UFC 300. So Poetan says, no problem. I'll step in and I'll handle my business. I'll, I'll help this card out. He steps in and main events UFC 300 at, after what was already incredi an incredible card. He ends the night with a starching left hook of Jamal Hill, finishes it up with nasty ground and pound, and then sits there and says, I want to turn around and fight at UFC 301. Now, one of the things we cannot take away from Adesanya, he was a very active champion. He fought very consistently. He fought very active. But when we look at the difference between Pereira and Adesanya, you wouldn't know that Pineda is the champion. And what I mean by that, 
He doesn't fight like he's defending the belt. He fights like he's trying to earn the belt. Every single time Pineda goes out there, he is looking to implement the same game plan over and over and over again. I'm going to beat up your legs, neutralize your movement, make you a stationary target, start to jab you to the body, maybe fire a few right hands here and there. And then when you start to reach and you start to overextend, I'm going to track you down and I'm going to catch you with a left hook and send you in the, into another dimension. We are now at the point, ladies and gentlemen, where Alex Pineda from the walkout, the bow and arrow, ah, from all of what he does, Shama, all of the different things that he has done, he has now positioned himself as one of the biggest names inside of combat sports right now. The iron has never been hotter for Alex Pineda. And I understand that Adesanya was able to knock him out in the second MMA fight. And that was a sensational setup by Adesanya, kind of playing possum along the fence and catching him. That honestly made Alex Pineda better. Ever since, you know, the Yablohovich fight, his hands were a little low. And the Yuri Prohaska jamal Hill fight, to me, he's looked more technical than he's ever looked at, uh, inside the UFC in terms of the striking. His hands are a little bit higher. He seems a little bit more defensively sound to me. And he just looks... When he fought Jamal Hill at UFC 300, he was in the best condition I think we've seen him in since he's been in the UFC. He looked strong. He looked lean. And technically, he just looked outstanding. And we're at the point now where this guy is someone the UFC is going to lean on to headline cards because not only do they know that he's going to show up, he's going to deliver time in and time out. Name one boring fight that Alex Pineda has been a part of since he's been inside the UFC. Not a single fight has been boring. And you could make the argument and say, how many boring fights has Adesanya had? Several. And what were his most exciting? The two against Pineda. So when we sit there and we say, who's going to be the bigger draw? I understand that Isra Adesanya on Instagram and on social media does have a big, big following because he himself has accomplished a lot of things outside of the UFC prior, including Glory, in, in, uh, including King of the Ring, where Adesanya has done some sensational things inside of kickboxing. And there is no doubt he is an incredibly skilled fighter who is very tactical, very technical, and gives Pineda a, a great go every time you know they fight each other. I just love the way they match up. The brute power of Pineda with, with very good fight IQ and technique, as well as just a technical kind of you know magician that is Ezra Adesanya. And I come to this conclusion to say that I believe one of the biggest fights the UFC could possibly make would be Israel Adesanya regaining the 185-pound strap, then going up to 205 to challenge Alex Pineda for the 205 belt. Now, obviously, to get to this matchup, several different things have to happen. We have to see Adesanya get the belt back, number one, and then we have to see Pineda continue to defend the strap because it sounds like he might be fighting Magomed Ankalaev next, and we know that that's a rough matchup and that's a really hard stylistic fight for Poetan. But if the stars align that these guys could potentially be matched up against each other at 205, I think it's a blockbuster opportunity for both fighters. I think it's one of the biggest fights the UFC could make right now. I think it absolutely sells if Izzy could go out there, get back on track, get his belt back. I think it's a huge, huge, huge fight. But now we're at the point where Pineda, in my opinion holds the cards. I understand that Izzy is one of the golden boys in the UFC. The UFC gives him, you know, some of the, I don't want to say special privileges, but he's one of the people they like to promote. He's got the flashy striking, the dancing, the fashion, the style. He has all of those things and he does have a big following on social media. But when I look at the, in terms of production, in terms of delivering, in terms of building a solid fan base that cannot wait to tune in and watch this man fight, if you're asking me right here, April 15th, who the bigger star is between Israel Adesanya and Alex Poetan Pineda, it's got to be Alex Pineda. It's got to be Alex Pineda. What this man has done, tracking down Adesanya, getting him out of there the first time they fight in MMA, which Izzy was winning the fight up until that point, so we got to give him credit there, comes out, defends the belt, gets knocked out by Izzy, moves up to 205, and has won three in a row inside the light heavyweight division. He's only lost one fight inside the UFC, which was to Izzy. Outside of that, he's undefeated in the UFC other than that second Izzy fight. And he has been basically essentially almost running through everybody at this point to the point where 
This man is must-see TV. He has outstanding striking, the aura, the scariness, the intimidation from the ceremonial weigh-ins with the face paint, the you know the, the whole you know uh, outfit he's got going on. This man has done everything correctly by tracking down Izzy, finishing him, being a two-time glory kickboxing champion to becoming a two-time UFC champion in two different weight classes. This man is sensational, and it is time to start recognizing that Alex Pineda now holds the cards when it comes to a matchup between Pineda and Izzy because Izzy, in my opinion, is no longer the bigger star over Alex Pineda. I want to hear from you all down in the comments. Like this video. Comment your take on this. Who's the bigger star right now? Is it Pineda or is it Adesanya? Subscribe to the channel. Help your boy out. I appreciate you all. See you next time.